Hello, Chef Marcus Giuliano here. Hello, everybody. Your chef on a mission. Let's talk fish really quick. I have a quick 10 minute video right after me talking here all about panga, about panga, where it comes from, from the Mekong Delta, uh, how dirty it's farmed, uh, just, just things that you might not know about panga. And you might not even know about panga, but panga is lurking in your food everywhere. When you go to a restaurant and order fish tacos, there's a good chance you're getting panga basa asian catfish whatever they want to call it this is the reality of what's happening to this fish and this is why it's so cheap i can walk in the restaurant depot right now and buy any of these so-called fish this fish under these so-called names same fish and it is extremely dirt cheap insanely cheap it's like tilapia cheap so but there's you really don't know when you especially when you go to a restaurant and it's like, I'll have the fish tacos or, I'll, you know, the, the fried, the fried fish, uh, the um, the fish fry, whatever it is. And when th this is a very common ingredient, it's very common fish because it's so cheap and economical for restaurants to make money on. Even now with inflation going like crazy and the price of food going through the roof, this fish right here will make a lot of restaurants a lot of money. And more and more restaurants are going to be using this fish because of the cost of other fish. So, I mean cod and everything is just so expensive right now and so this fish is going to save the finances for a lot of restaurants but be very wary and uh enjoy the video it is from uh the world's most toxic seafood documentary talking about salmon but this is all the section on panga so enjoy and watch what you eat folks watch what you eat um it's well listen to the video and check it out Relatively unknown until 10 years ago, today, panga is one of the 10 most consumed fish in France. It can be found in fish shops and also in most supermarkets as frozen fillets. But thanks to its low price, panga has become especially prevalent in the mass catering business, to the point of becoming one of the most consumed fishes in school lunches. How have these farmed fish products been able to be offered at such low prices? And what exactly can be found in the flesh of these fish which is being served to our children? In southern Vietnam, in the Mekong Delta, the first step of my investigation. Here, panka is part of the culinary traditions sold in the markets, consumed every day in restaurants. But behind this traditional image, there's another reality. For 15 years, Panga has also become one of the principal money makers of the region. 95% of global production comes from southern Vietnam. In the small village of Can Tho, in the Delta, a statue has been erected to it, right next to that of Ho Chi Minh, the father of the country's independence. I'm to discover that this economic success also hides a darker side, exploiting the inhabitants as well as the environment. On the river, I have an appointment with a busy man, who the Vietnamese call the Panga King, Mr. Min. In just under 15 years, he has amassed the fourth richest fortune in the country, thanks to his fish farms. He exports panga to more than 30 different countries, including France. For the first time, he has accepted to open his doors to television cameras. Hello, Mr. Min. The big fish are feeding over there. No, let's just show them the little fish. They're hungrier. Let's go over there. Mr. Min's fortune can be found entirely under the water of these fish ponds. To understand its magnitude, you must come here early in the morning and watch the show while the fish have their breakfast. In each one of these ponds, 300,000 pangas, an industrial concentration for a voracious fish. We feed these panga twice a day, and each time we give them three tons of food. 
That's how we feed them. Stuffed with dry pellet feed, bloated with fat and protein, the fish reach adult size in just six months, two times faster than in nature. To ensure production, Mr. Min has over 350 ponds of this kind. On my farms, there are 100 million panga. You must realize there are more fish in my ponds than there are people in all of Vietnam. After six months of farming, 25 tons of fish have been harvested per pond. But for panga, it is only the beginning of their journey to the plates on European tables. For maximum consumer appeal, Mr. Min will put them through a radical transformation in one of his eight fish processing plants. In less than an hour, they will become frozen fillets filled with additives ready for export. To prepare the fish, which will be sold at low prices on the European market, more than a thousand workers process up to 100 tons of panga per day. Employee compensation depends on their performance, up to 150 euros per month. But to do that, they must keep up the pace. On average, 10 seconds per fillet, 10 hours a day. The more they work, the more they earn. That's the rule here. Before freezing, one last step is necessary, and that begins in these large washers. In this water, polyphosphates, additives which facilitate freezing. But they have another advantage. They allow the fillets to soak up water which artificially increases their weight. In the end, the fish are tasteless and odorless. But surprisingly, to Mr. Min, that is an advantage for exportation. Unlike other fish, panga has no odor. And it's tasteless as well, so it takes on the flavors of the spices added to it. So suddenly, it's become a favorite of kitchens throughout the world. That's the secret of panga. Every year, Vietnam exports 1.5 billion of these low-cost, colorless, and odorless fillets. 20% of the production coming from Mr. Min's plants. In his freight depot, several thousand tons are being shipped to Spain, the Ukraine, as well as Brazil. But also, according to Mr. Min, to certain French supermarkets. Okay. This is the bill for our fish which is being sent to Carrefour. It goes through a middleman because Carrefour doesn't buy from us directly. There's a wholesaler who buys a shipment from us and resells part of it to Carrefour. Look, this is the wholesaler who's based in Paris. In Mr. Min's panga, we didn't find anything that would raise health concerns. But on other fish farms, some fish have flesh with dangerous chemical cocktail concentrations. Most farmed panga are sick because of the pollution from the Mekong waters. Mr. Huyn is the local representative of the WWF. In 2009, this association put panga on its red list of products which are dangerous to the environment as well as to the consumer. Look, there. That's a fish farm. There are panga right there. The panga on this farm are raised in water directly pumped into the channel. One of thousands of small tributaries of the Mekong with high pollution levels. The pollution can be seen with the naked eye. You only have to compare the color of these small channels with that of the main river. Here it's much darker. It's because of all the human activity around it. Into these channels, millions of Vietnamese dump their household waste on a daily basis. The region is also the world's largest rice exporter. Intensive cultivation practices, which spread massive amounts of pesticides, 
Faced with this cocktail of pollutants, the waters have reached high alert status. These channels concentrate green algae and bacteria, which destroy the oxygen and release toxins into the water. And that can make the panga sick? Yes, of course, because by reducing the oxygen levels in the water, it affects the immune system and the health of the fish. And to treat their panga sickened by pollution, farmers pour industrial quantities of drugs into the ponds. On this farm, in fact, the fish have caught several diseases. So this is a big farm, huh? Yes. Patrick Kestemont is a researcher at the University of Namur in Belgium. He came to help this farmer to treat his sick panga. They do not have too many problems with uh, diseases. On the body. Oh, yes. yes. To their bodies. And there is also bleeding. Bleeding in the fin areas. Yes. Bleeding. Okay, bleeding. Oh, yes. And they also get a liver disease. In the liver. Yes. Does he have some uh, stages? Patrick Kestemont is going to discover that to treat the fish, farmers use dangerous doses of drugs. Mm, plenty of chemical here. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, here you can see the antibiotics. In this local pharmacy, there are hundreds of boxes of antibiotics of all kinds. Heavily used on the farms, they cause a chain reaction. The problem is that there are always residues. They're found in the environment and eventually the bacteria becomes resistant to these antibiotics. Regularly administered to the fish, these antibiotics heighten the diseases they are supposed to fight, forcing the producers to raise the dosages. A vicious circle because today the farmer can't avoid it. If the fish consume the antibiotics, they become absorbed into its tissues and it will be released as a form of residue via feces, via excretions. And then these antibiotic residues will be found elsewhere, in the channels, to the point where they can also spread to other farms because these waters are also used by other fish farmers. To stop this vicious cycle, Patrick Kestemont is trying to promote less polluting drugs. But they are much too expensive for farmers who complain about the market prices of their fish being offered by Western distributors. Our production costs are 23,000 dong per kilo, but our selling price is only 22,000 dong, so we're already losing money. Okay, so no good for the, for the business, huh? Yeah. But sometimes it's, it's After the antibiotics, oh, no. Patrick Kestemont will make an even more disturbing discovery. Oof. It's also a stock. Fumarate, manganese, yeah. gluconate, copper gluconate. No antibiotic, right? No, eh? it looks no. like, uh, like chemical. chemicals and uh, enhance, again, uh, again uh, pesticide. Uh, hemoglobin. Okay. <laughs> Pesticides that concentrate in fish flesh and in the Mekong waters. Dry feed pellets which make the panga grow twice as fast than from natural food. And a record number of fish concentrated in the ponds. These farming conditions put consumers' health at risk. <laughs> <laughs> 